Hi, my name is David Nathanson. I'm assistant professor in the Department of Molecular Medical Pharmacology at the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA. What we're working on is developing new patient-derived avatar models for the discovery of new therapeutic targets and treatments. Once or twice a week, Dr. Lenny Liao will get the tumor tissue from a standard surgical resection, and we'll take that tissue, we'll isolate the tumor cells from that patient's tissue, and we'll actually engraft it into the brains of mice. Using these models, we have sequenced the DNA, so we're getting the genetic code of each one of these tumors, and we're trying to understand how these tumors try to resist cell death. Is there anything else you would like to be doing at this point in time? I really want to use these model systems to do clinical trials. Hey, it's great we cured a tumor in a mouse, but ultimately we have to get this into a patient. Hi, I'm Steve Bensinger. I'm an associate professor in molecular and medical pharmacology, and I'm also in the Department of Microbiology, Immunology, and Molecular Genetics. I'm funded by the IGN Foundation to do metabolic profiling of oligodendrogliomas. We hope to understand to what extent oligodendrogliomas have unique metabolic properties contributing to their growth and survival, and then can we specifically target those pathways to affect a new cure or therapeutics where we might reduce growth and ultimately achieve a clinical cure. One of the things that my laboratory is expert in is using advanced robots that help us extract the metabolites in a very uniform fashion, and then we move it over to a second machine that's the mass spectrometer. And that measures the metabolites at a very precise level between normal and, let's say, cancer tissue. And the person that's really expert in developing this here is the director of the UCLA Lipidomics Lab, it's Dr. Kevin Williams. He's a scientist who will explain to you how this machine works. So this is one of the mass spectrometers that we work on. It'll draw the sample in a syringe here. It will inject that into the first half of the machine. It uses actually helium gas to push the sample through a very long column. And it's about 30 meters long. The different compounds will move at different speeds. And then at the end of that, they'll enter into the mass spectrometer portion of the instrument where you then analyze those compounds as they're separated from one another. The information from that is then reported on the computer over here and then we'll analyze the data. I'm Benjamin Ellingson. I'm an associate professor of radiology and director of the UCLA Brain Tumor Imaging Laboratory. So my laboratory develops, tests, and implements new types of non-invasive imaging for brain tumor patients because unlike other types of cancers, we can't biopsy repeatedly to understand what's going on in the tumor over time. In your research, are you able to obtain data from other institutions? Absolutely, and specifically when we're trying to identify tumor location and identification of different subtypes and treatments, we really need a lot of patients in order to do that. And so we've got upwards of 2,000 patients from over 20 centers throughout the United States and Europe contributing, donating their images to kind of help with the effort. So yeah, there's a lot of work going on. I'm Dr. Linda Liao, and I'm Professor of Neurosurgery here. I'm Interim Chair of the Department of Neurosurgery and Director of the Brain Tumor Program. I'm also Isabel's physician. Dr. Rob Prince and I actually have been working together for the last 20 years. In the last few years, thanks to the IGN funding, focusing on immune targets for oligodendrogliomas. And what we're trying to figure out is what within a oligodendroglioma may be different enough that will attract the immune cells to go specifically to the tumor, but not to the normal brain. We're at a point now where I think with additional funding, we can start developing those early phase potential clinical trials for some of these targets. That'll still be a several year process, but we could start thinking about how do we take these discoveries to develop therapeutics to go into patients.